So it's Friday. Yes, sir. You're on the interwebs and social medias more than me, but I think the the trend now is a I know, am? Friday, Friday kind of thing. I don't know. I don't even have time to keep up with our own social media anymore. Well, I'm not posting it, so who is? Me. <laughs> well, there you go. My, I'm, I'm sleep posting. Although I will say, speaking of Friday, since it is finally the fall and, and uh, you know, going to be a little cooler, they claim anyway, not a, a record breaking heat day. It, it's football weather. Well, what was your favorite part of a, of a Friday game day? Everything. One I played in? Yeah, like high school yeah. ball. We, we both played high school ball. We, we, we mention that every now and then. Yeah. I liked hitting people. That's kind of, you know, like I, I really did enjoy hitting people. <laughs> what did what'd you get to do on Friday nights? I mean, being a lineman, you get to hit people a lot. Depends on which side of the ball you're on. I was a D lineman. Yeah. I, I got to hit a lot of people. O line. I, I was much more of a blocking. Yeah. You I get s- to hit people, but. You got to put your shoulder into them. <laughs> no, you get to use your hands. You just keep it inside the pads. Yeah. A lot of. Uh, what they don't see, they don't know. Man, I just told my coach always, I'm good at messing stuff up. I'm wrecking. <laughs> we know that. I'm good at wrecking things. I'm not good at making things. <laughs> so we, we've at least established that much over uh, several shows by now. Absolutely. So I was at home as a D-lineman. I tried to create as much havoc as I possibly could on the line to let a skinny linebacker come in and make a tackle. Oh, all work, no credit, huh? Hey, same thing with this show. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, folks, it's time for Friday Friday. <laughs> Everyone, my name is John Edwards, and with me is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. How are you, Zeke Baker? I'm good. It's a, a beautiful, soon-to-be Friday night. You know, a couple shows ago, when I said, wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day, and you said, what if it's night? Didn't think of it at the time, but I meant to say back to you, I feel like wherever you are, whatever time it is, covers whether it's day or night. So we got to find something different to say after thank you for making us a part of your 24 hours? No, a day is 24 hours. Or your moment? A day is 24 hours. Like Monday is 24 hours. I mean, when Tuesday I said I've is. had a hell of a day, it can be seven hours. It could be seven hours. It could be 16 hours. It could, could be, be two 20. hours. It could. Home with both kids and myself, a hell of a day can happen in two hours. It it can, but a day could also consist of 24 hours, which includes the day and the night. People are getting mad at us over semantics, I think. I don't know, but how was your day today? Not too shabby. Did some work here and there, hauled off a sofa. You have a good weekend? Fair enough. I missed you, but we had a great time. Just want to mention thank you to everyone at Bacon and Barrel. We had an amazing time. That was an awesome event. Great food. I can't wait for you guys to hear the episodes of those. They're probably going to start trickling out next week. And then from there, I went out to Heritage Days at Pigeon Forge and all the good folks at Old Forge. To Jesse, Chris, Keener, thank you so much for letting me come spend some time with all of you out there. I also got to check out Junction 35 Spirits, which is going to be opening later this month. So Trey and Summer, thank you so much for letting me come see the construction site, see what you guys are doing out there. I can't wait to go back out once you guys have everything done. But Zeke, I missed you. No, well, sorry. We, we got to spend Friday night together. We I, mean, did. I remember you meandering around and taking clips and sweating and asking me questions. I don't think I always responded, so sorry for that one. But to the tone of the event, uh, I, I really thought it was a, an amazing and great time of all the people I was able to kind of, you know, poll after the fact, you know, you know, friends and family that we had that were there. And they all you had the same sentiments 
thought there was, you know, more than enough vendors on both the food and tasting side. Even better, uh, there was enough and, and everything kind of spaced out enough to where there weren't, you know, lines, overlaps, long waits. You, you could, you know, bounce around your own speed, cover all the bases kind of thing. And I mean, it, it was a good time. Lots of good eats. As John said, I'm sure some of these shows will roll out pretty soon. And when you hear somebody ask us, you know, what was your favorite and an and, and inability to really pinpoint one, it's not a lie. There was that much randomly good stuff inside of just the, the simple notion of bacon and a barrel. Yeah, it was. Lines were great. The food was great. Thank you for all the guests who came on the show. Y'all will hear more about that next week. I want to let you know before we start this show, we are sponsored by CastCartel.com, changing the industry standard in how you are receiving your alcohol. They're like the Amazon of the spirits industry. So what they're doing is they're bringing together buyers and sellers. It's like the Amazon marketplace, except it's for liquor. So if you need some bourbon, some scotch, some whiskey, some tequila, some mezcal, some gin, vodka, whatever it is, Go to castcartel.com from the comfort of your own home. You could be sitting on the couch watching TV late night and say, man, I need some more liquor. You could go to castcartel.com, get it shipped right to your door. Check them out. Follow them on Instagram at castcartel. You might actually get some free samples from them. They are great people. They're always sending some stuff our way, those little samples that we do some shows around. Check them out at cascartel.com. I should also mention that we are sponsored by distilleryproducts.com. They provide all of our glassware and they are the best kept secret, which is now getting out in the laser etched glass industry. And they provide all of the distilleries. I actually found out about them from distilleries and i said where do you get your your glen karens i need to figure out where we're getting ours and they said we use distilleryproducts.com and it turns out they have the best prices they are the best people they have amazing wholesale prices they are the only people who do the to a glass which is an irish whiskey tasting glass and then they also do the neat glass they are the only place in north america where you can get the neat glass engraved they have great prices on their glen karens they have decanters they have flasks they have all sorts of stuff check them out distilleryproducts.com we really enjoy working with them not only are we a fan we are also a client i just wonder if cast cartels got them claws i don't think so you know who has all the claws Publix. Well, on that note, I did see a pallet stacked probably about as high as my shoulders at the Kroger's today. And it will probably be, you know, maybe a 16-pack might show up at our, you know, pick at JD. Oh, really? As part of Friday Fun Day. Well, this pick was at the Publix. I mean, I, I can't make any promises, but I did hit up uh, Tom and say, should this be part of the pick? And he said yes. Well, we are going to be picking a Jack Daniels on Friday. We can't wait. What we are tasting today, because we've gone a long time without actually talking about whiskey, is we are tasting Parker's Heritage Collection Heavy Char Barrel Straight Rye. It's 105 proof, 52.5 ABV. It's eight years old. It is 51% rye, 35% corn, 14% malted barley. It goes for an MSRP of 150 and this sample was provided to us. It was a media sample provided by Heaven Hill Distillery. So thank you all for the sample. However, by no means is it going to affect our review in any way, shape, or form. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a rundown. Yeah. You try this yet? What do you think? I mean, Friday, Friday. We're finally going to join the kids and be trendy. I know. I got to put this picture out on Friday and say, I, hey. I did, I did try this and... Before we dive into the notes, you always have to wonder, not like a Big Brother conspiracy theory thing, but how is it when not only one, but two of the biggest distilleries, both at the same time, just randomly and coincidentally happen to put out a rye as their you know, one-time rare featured release for the year? I think it shows a lot that a lot of places are trending towards rye. Bruce Russell kind of gets it right where he's... Russell's rye guy. He knows that rye is kind of the future. A lot of the stuff in bourbon is very saturated. So where are places where you can really differentiate yourself? 
not a lot of people are doing things in rye. And if you think about the whole rye category, a lot of it's 95.5 MGP stuff. For Wild Turkey Cornerstone to come out and do something that's a little bit different, you know, this Parker's Heritage, it's not a 95.5. It's 51% rye, 35% corn, 14% malted barley. I already mentioned that, but these are not your standard MGP mash rye. These are different. They have some other flavor in there because of the mash bills they are. You know, in, in Cornerstone, it's one of the things that you said in the review, Zeke. You said, this is not an MGP rye. So if you're expecting that flavor. Well, no, they're both Kentucky rye. So yep. 51%, you know, the bare minimum. Yep. But in, granted, you know, at least in the, on the Cornerstone, it does say, you know, aged a minimum of nine years could be older stuff dumped in there. At least to me, I always kind of wonder when you you see two things coming out like that because, you know, with TTB approval, people talking, et cetera, you got to wonder if they, you know, just laid some barrels down saying, well, we'll use this as a side project at some point. Well, then one person tells the next, hey, so-and-so is going to do this. Oh, well, we got some barrels. We could do this and, you know, kind of go a little head-to-head or just the whole premise of rising tide raises all ships. Yeah, absolutely. But I think those guys feel that way a lot, right? Those those folks in Kentucky, they know that if everybody gets hyped on rye, then it's going to be better for everybody with all their rye releases. You know, there's enough people that go get Wild Turkey. There's enough people that go get Parker's Heritage. I have always been a big fan of Parker's Heritage. You know this. I'm kind of a PHC junkie. You know, one of the things that I like about this is that a portion of every bottle goes to the ALS Association. And you know, we all know that that everyone lost Parker from ALS. A portion of the PHC bottles go to fight ALS. And and I always kind of like that. You know, we love charitable components to things. It's even better when you can give back a little bit through drinking some whiskey. All hyped up on Rise Bear and all hyped up on Mountain Dews. I'm a spider monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so what right. what'd you get on this one for the phc rye nose my initial kind of thoughts were it was a fruit over mint a very light kind of singe that came off of it reminded me almost in a sense of air freshener and you may have to bear with me on that because it'd be kind of like if you know hypothetically you walked out of the lavatory and then your better half might have walked in behind you and realized something had gone on there and you know they got a little over the top, over dramatic, and you know, sprayed half a thing of uh, Febreze or something. That kind of scene, you know. Yeah, I, th- I think you've been there before, probably. Probably. <laughs> uh, revisiting, kind of dialed it in a little bit more. I really thought it seemed like a blend of maybe more floral instead of fruit. And by that, I got the two things that hit me the most were honeysuckle and and mint leaves, or maybe even honeysuckle and. and you know, like just the smell that comes off of like a mint chocolate chip ice cream or something. But it was definitely a, a minty and chocolate component mixed in with like the floral of a honeysuckle. Palette, where everybody really wants to know. It, it was a curve. Uh, I thought it was light and thin. It, it reminded me of an Andes chocolate mint on a graham cracker. That's my specific note for this one. A little more detailed. It did seem to have a the slightest bit of of a char spice but it was surprisingly smooth no kick no hug and the more i thought about it any spice that was there really seemed to be simply from the char not the rye grain finish there was a slight bit of one and by slight it was in three aspects of slight dryness slight singe and slight mint lingering around i'm just laughing because you're like that guy looking at the audio bond uh, record in Lebowski right now. <laughs> we are so frigging opposite each other in our palates, and it just makes me laugh. I love that you are the yang to my yang. You are the oil to my water. You are the peanut butter to my jelly. Well, what did you get there, Captain Kangaroo? <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, the nose, I said lots of caramel and char with slight hints of rye spice. 
The nose is not like a 95.5. You know it's different. We already kind of mentioned that. But if you let this open up a lot, I got a lot of candied caramel. The taste, though, I said lots of char, and the Kentucky hug is big on this one. It's like everything skipped my palate for a second on that first sip and went right to the hug. I got lots of leather, dry leather with some caramel char, oak, and spice in there. After it stayed open for a while, though, like after air got to it, I just got a lot more candy caramel. We, we drank ours over the same period of time. I know, but I'm just saying I just had another sip after we've been sitting around here for a while. I just had another sip, and I get a lot of candy caramel. Like that char is still there. The heat isn't as bad as it was. And what'd you have for supper? Chick-fil-A. Sure wasn't something like Hunan or Mexican? Nope. No, a sir. Of, a little bit of reflux going on? No, sir. And they got buffalo sauce at Chick-fil-A now. No, I sir. I had honey. I don't know, Bob. I'm just telling you. I think it's funny. It kind of goes back to like that four roses we had. I mean, I got no kick. No hug. I like, got a whole bunch of kick. Like no rye spice at all. It wasn't like a rye spice kick. It was a heat kick. Like it immediately goes to my chest. I'm feeling it right now. I just took another sip. It's like a lot of heat in my chest. Ordering some kind of like 20% liqueur from Cass Cartel? No, sir. Only. You drinking like straight Kahlua now? No. Bourbon gin. Bourbon cream? No. Just telling you what I got. I know. I told you, you are the yang to my yang. I mean, a little bit of spice there. Literally, it's on the, the tongue mid to back, but it, it does not go down the hatch at all. I don't get rye yeah. spice. Like, I don't really get a big tingle in this one. It's just all heat. It's a it's a hug. It's a big old Kentucky hug, and it almost overtakes some of the other notes I might get. I don't know, bud. Just telling you. I know. I'm baffled. Well, what about this one right now? Would you buy this sip it at a bar? I would probably go sip at a bar. I was really surprised, especially come in with it, and as much as they talk about the char, I guess I expected, you know, it's only, you know, an eight-year product to some degree more of an, an oak or wood profile, or even if it was bite from a char, which I'm not a fan of, none of that was really there. I, that's what surprised me the most was how just soft and, and, and smooth it seemed, thin and the flavors that were there, none, you know, were rip roaring or, or pronounced really anyway. I'm surprised you really got that having this be a heavy char. I mean, this is using a number five char barrel. It's charred for 90 seconds. It's 50 seconds longer. No, a I'm, a, I'm aware. I, I, I'm signed up for the Heaven Hill emails and a 21 that's not or didn't see it. You can go to their website and check it out. And literally, I, this is not a, a promo. I thought it was pretty interesting. Find on their main page where the PHC for this year is. Click on it. They did a thing where they show that all five char types. It's interesting to see how much you know disparity there is between you know all of those. No lie, that that level five char. That's a cooked little boy right there. <laughs> I mean, if that was a s'more, ain't nobody touching it. I'm just surprised you don't get more of that from this. I would have thought it going in. Crazy, but it it's not there. That being said, I'm still a bar on this one. I mean, I know I get a big old hug, but it's a damn good whiskey. I think it just needs, for me, I need to let it sit on the table a little bit before I go to drink it. 150's not the easiest pill to swallow, though. No. In the pharmacy world, they call that a horse pill. I still think it's a good pour. Yeah. It's a bar. You know, it's a bar pour. It's a, I want to have a special occasion pour. I'm out and going to have it at a bar. It'd be interesting, too, to see the uh, the rye folks, because folks seem to vary there a lot more as well. It'd be fun to see various you know rye you know fans and, and what their perception of it is, because clearly you and I are uh, Cheech and Chong or Day and Night or whatever it was you said earlier. So I'm Day Man and you're the Night Man? I think more like Method Man versus Red Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to with. Exactly. You got to diversify your bonds. <laughs> so we alluded to it. And, and speaking of diversifying your bourbons and your diversifying your rise, we talked about it a little bit. We alluded to it. 
and Wild Turkey came up with Cornerstone. And we figure, what better way to put this PHC to the test than put it up against Wild Turkey's Cornerstone? I mean, I think the people are going to want to know it. I think both are at a a price point where any rye fan may be in the position of, look, I can only buy one of these or my wife's going to kick me somewhere I don't want to be kicked. Which one should I buy? And or just give me your notes at least and let me try to form my own opinion based off of them because yeah, you know we get some you know pretty good feedback from folks that identify with both palettes and that's fine dandy that that's the goal at the end of the day is you know whether you agree or disagree as long as you're tasting the same thing as one of us then go with that flow absolutely so speaking of tasting something and going with the flow what do you really get here when you put these side by side so my first thought, even when we tasted the PHC for the first time, was how much more viscous I remembered the cornerstone being. And I think that still holds true. I mean, it is a thick, oily, like, you just feel it so much better. And I know that's not a tasting note, but damn if it's not just a day and night difference. I think it's, it's a little bit thicker, the cornerstone. I think it's a little more complex. I get more notes in there and it's like I get a sweet and spicy thing. I I think I get a little more rye note in the cornerstone than I do in the PHC. I get much more of a a spice and a a berry. I don't know what kind of berry. It's not, it's not as far off as, you know, like a licorice type flavor, but it's a darker berry flavor that and the spice really kick into me on that. You know, whatever components given it that viscosity and, and, you know, oily definitely leads to a much longer remnant and hanging around. Probably now five seconds post sip of the, the cornerstone, I can still feel basically a ring of it, you know, toward the back of the palate, just kind of hanging out, leaving a light singe, light remnants of flavors. Uh, it's just kind of there, you know. Fair Where, enough. Whereas I, I haven't got that with the PHC at this point. I have to lean Cornerstone. If I had these two together, I know the Cornerstone is more expensive. I have to lean Cornerstone. I think I'm there as well. The only thing keeping the the PHC in the fight is just there is a sweeter component to it. It's not there throughout the tasting, but the Cornerstone is much more to me of a, I don't like the word necessarily medicinal, but herbaceous almost. It has more herbaceous qualities than it does just that that kind of sweetness, which I think you really picked up more than I did in the PHC. I mean, you're right. I did get a lot of caramel in that PHC. I just think the Cornerstone, now the Cornerstone's 175 so it's a $25 difference. I do think the Cornerstone just has a lot more layers. I mean, it took a lot for me to get that caramel in the PHC. Like I had to let it sit for a while. That cornerstone kind of had more off the get go, off the jump for me than the PHC did. But I, I still, and and this is very difficult for me to say because I'm self admittedly, I'm a tater for PHC. I mean, I know if you see one at retail, you, you're still going to get one. Probably. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I, I appreciate the the unbiased John saying bar, but real John in the store. Oh, 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 oh I got one. Oh. Can, can 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 I get it? Can I get it? Uh, come on. <laughs> that's not what will come out, but that internally, that's what's going to be. What's going on? Can I get it? Can I get it? <laughs> uh. but no, I mean, uh, it, it, to me, having them side by side really it helps them both to showcase what they each have versus compared to the other one, and what you know, or, or what they're lacking. However, you want to look at it, but the sweetness having them side by side, the PHC shows. But again, it, it, it just doesn't have the viscosity and the hang around remnant. And I, especially with rise and, you know, as fall is at least hopefully approaching. To me, that that's, you know, such a quality that I look for and arrive. Hey, it's a nice, cool, brisk, possibly even cold evening at a cash strength rye. You know, I, I expect to not have to take too much of a sip get a nice warm feeling that, you know, just resonates from, you know, the shoulders down to, you know, blow the ribs, hopefully. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. 
If it went down to my knees and toes, I'd be a little worried. <laughs> the only time I ever felt anything there was when I had the uh, Shut the Cluck Up from Hattie B's. Not the original back in the day stuff, but after it went too hyped, yeah, uh, I really couldn't feel from the knees down. <laughs> so my vote is I'm a bar for the PHC, but knowing me, I'd probably be a sucker and buy it. And I, if I would have to concur. But if I do side by side and I'm not talking about myself and I'm talking about like what is my non-biased opinion i think i like the cornerstone over the phc i think both are definitely worth a taste to any enthusiast i mean clearly rye palettes to me very much more than a bourbon palette and these are going to hit folks in different ways i mean like i say the the turkey is definitely more just herbaceous to me and, and kind of that feel it has i like it but i could see where some folks would say no no uh, I'll take the one that's sweeter and, and a little bit thinner and doesn't hang around as long. I mean, hence why people don't necessarily, you know, resonate or, or gravitate toward rice as often as they do a bourbon. I don't know. So, so those are your final verdicts? My final verdict would be it's definitely worth tasting. If you're a Parker's fan, obviously jump on it and grab one. You're not going to be disappointed in this by any means. But if you're the type of person that's sitting there on the fence saying, I like rise, I can only get one of these two, hopefully, hopefully get them. Hopefully John and I's notes here have, have you know, given you enough insight to help you make the right purchase. Yeah, the only thing that's a little concerning for me is both of these were a significant jump up, right? I think I give a little more leeway to the PHC because money is going to ALS you know, but typically the master's keeps were, you know, 130 to 140. And now this one's jumped up to 175. And the, you know, the Parkers would be normally around 100, 110. This one's jumped up to 150. I think it's tough when you jump up there when you have a Pikesville, even under the Heaven Hill umbrella, that's 50 bucks, 110 proof. It's six years old, but. Not eight years old, but it's not that far off. And then you have like the Michter's barrel proof. You have the toasted Michter's barrels. So for PHC, you know, yeah, they're doing something kind of unique with barrels and, and the heavy char, but you know, Michter's is doing something unique with the toasted barrels. I think it's tough to kind of double that price and be competitive in general. Well, I mean, everybody sees market trends. They see people pay for stuff, they, whether it be at a store or other means. If nothing else, they see what other companies are charging. I mean, this Cornerstone is not the most expensive rye under a Burge label that's going to come out of Kentucky this year. Touche. Either way, that being said, if you have the means, right? I mean, because 150 is different to a lot of people. Yeah. If you have the means, if you have 150, 175, nobody's going to be disappointed with either one of these bottles. They're both great pours. Go try them. Go find them. Drink them at a bar. What do you think, Zeke? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm still at the original conclusion we had uh, from when we did Cornerstone a few weeks back. I'm happy with that purchase. I'm not going to load up and get a case of them, but I'm happy to have one. Parker's, I, I think that has a different place for a lot of people, but... If that doesn't have that place for you, I would I would try it at a bar first before you know making that purchase. Probably the cornerstone is much more floral, and the PHC for me has more caramel. I wonder what this would be like if it wasn't the heavy char. I mean, I know that's the whole shtick of this one, but I almost wonder what it would be like if it was a level three char. But for eight years, it's not char heavy. It's not char forward. No, but. I mean, it is for me. Like I'm getting char and dry leather, but I get that caramel. We've but had four year rise that, to me, packed more of a bitter. You know, that's the thing I'm going to think of when I think of heavy char. That's not necessarily time with the oak. That's time with the char. That's going to give you a bite. It's, it's going to be almost salty at the back because oak. You know, that's a wood splinter. That that's not the the bite in the the char and that that you know burn feeling. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like those barrels rested well, to be honest. Oh, I agree. I agree. I think they did. Anyways, speaking of resting well, you can rest well on your couch with us if you follow us on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Follow us on your favorite podcast app. 
whichever one you use to download your podcast, we're on it. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? <laughs> well, true to form, John, I had to do a blend. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, hey, people want to know. This is a 50 50 PHC and a Cornerstone Rye. At least on the first sip and half smell I got, it really brought out the best of both. The finish is Cornerstone and the front is you PHC. Smell and you get a big flash of sweet. I mean, the finish is flo- the floral cornerstone, and that front is all PHC. That's great. It's taking the best parts of both of them. <laughs> yeah. if, if by some chance you find both of these uh, or have both of these, I, I now highly recommend doing a 50-50 blend of these. ISO for three twenty five, <laughs> two bottles, one, one, of each. one of each half and half. But other than that, today when you're hearing this, You'll probably see that we've uh, we've been down at uh, Jack Daniels doing a barrel proof pick. Could not be more excited about that. JDBP. Cheers. Ciao.